Well, I've decided to come to work today and share some of my thoughts on my extended spring break thanks to the coronavirus. And I find myself continually reflecting on my childhood, mainly my mother. I'm doing all the things that she did when I was a child, and I must admit I am taking a lot of comfort in those things. For instance, I've been cleaning a lot. My mother was always dusting and mopping and doing laundry. I'm doing it right now to prevent germs from spreading. She did it because that was her job. She was my mom. She was my safe place. And she loved me unconditionally, even when she was yelling at me. A small foretaste of the love that I know my Heavenly Father has for me. Isn't it funny how much things have changed and yet how little they really have changed? I can remember in my younger years, my mother would call my godparents' grocery store and have our groceries delivered to our house. Now the grocery stores have all gone digital with the same results. I guess it's true. Everything old is new again. We rarely ate out, and dinner was always served when my dad walked through the front door. I'm sure that many of us right now, once again, are clearing off the bills and the laundry and the laptops all off our tables and sitting down together as a family for dinner again as our local restaurants are all closing their dining rooms. Oh, and I ditched my dishwasher. I mean, there's no sense in wasting all that water when I can do the dishes faster, washing them by hand. I have the time now. Plus, it reminds me of a time when my sister and I would fight over who got to wash and who had to dry. Notice the verbiage? Drying was the least favorite because you were stuck at the sink until the bitter end. I've even started watching soap operas again, maybe for the comforting memory of a time when I was the child and my mother watched her stories as she ironed the laundry, or maybe for the break from some real problems. I remember staying at home when I was sick and watching them with her, and now I find myself talking to the TV and interjecting my thoughts on whatever rabbit hole the writers are taking their fans down. Brooke, please don't betray your sister again with the same man that you've both married twice. My goodness, she just recovered from a kidney transplant, but I digress. However, isn't that the beauty of all of this? I think we all need to digress a little from our current reality it's real, and it's ugly, and it's scary. And I bet my mother felt the same way growing up during the Great Depression, or as a young adult during World War II, or a parent with kids that were old enough to be drafted in the Vietnam War. Now I sit and I wonder if she did the same thing. Did she reflect on memories of her screen door slamming shut as she ran out onto her front porch? Remember her mother washing clothes using a scrub board or carrying eggs from the hen house in her apron? Does she remember her unconditional love even when she was being yelled at? I bet she did. And I bet it gave her the comfort and strength to make it through those days too. We're going through some really trying times. And just like I take comfort in those memories that remind me of childhood and simpler things and my mother's unconditional love, I also take comfort in knowing that my God is the same God that has seen countless people through an infinite variety of scary times, including pandemics. I've learned to lean in on my faith at times like this because faith is the one thing that gives me the peace, the strength, and the hope that we'll all get through this somehow. So even though we are socially distancing ourselves, I thank God for all the technology that keeps me sane. My computer still works, I have the internet, my cell phone works, and it not only allows me to text and speak with those I love, but I can even FaceTime them and actually see their faces. But if you wanna FaceTime me, please text me first so I can make sure I have on makeup. I have cable, and those wonderful, trashy, totally predictable and incredibly insane soap operas to take my mind off of the real world for at least 30 minutes a day. I've got my Bible and countless apps and devotions geared toward my specific needs for the day. 
But more importantly, I have my God who never changes, never gives up on me, no matter how many times I screw up and never ever lets me walk through anything alone. So I'm gonna be praying for all of us daily and I'm gonna cast all my anxieties on him and I'll continue to be the crazy screw up that he sometimes uses to share his message of love.